This is a short uh, lecture on um, correlation. Um, so correlation is a term that we use to, uh, or that pertains to a variety of uh, statistical techniques. Um, so these are techniques that describe or that allows us to describe the and measure the relationship between two or more uh, variables um, not to say that other statistical techniques such as t-test or ANOVA does not examine relationships they also do um, and that's oftentimes a source of confusion uh, because the term correlation has the word relation uh, relation uh, in it as a root word um, many some some people think that uh, correlation is uh, used to examine relationships whereas t test in ANOVA um, does not examine relationship uh, but rather mean differences um, when when we talk about uh, mean differences such is also an evidence of a relationship or a systematic uh, co-variation um, but more particularly um, correlation is is used um, when your well at least for a specific kind of correlation which is Pearson R correlation when your uh, dependent variable is continuous and when your independent variable is also measured as a continuous uh, variable um, so by I think it's a general rule that that's when correlation is used particularly Pearson R uh, correlation um, however um, as I as what um, I will discuss later on Correlation can also be uh, sometimes used um, when one of your variable is um, categorical, uh, especially if it's only a two-level categorical variable, um, and also when your variable is measured as an ordinal uh, as an ordinal data. There's also a specific kind of uh, correlation technique that can be used uh, which is P, uh, which is spearman rank correlation um, i will get into uh, such details uh, later on um, in in correlation however um, even when um, even when you have a dichotomous variable uh, it, its main concern um, is the measurement of the uh, magnitude uh, and direction of the relationship so maybe to make it a little bit more simple um, let's let's think about for the meantime correlation as it applies to um, examining the relationship between two variables that are measured um, continuously um, and what correlation does particularly Pearson R correlation is to examine two things about that relationship number one is the magnitude or the strength of the relationship and the other one is the direction of the relationship okay um, so correlation is used um, uh, and it can be a basis for prediction uh, so if two things are correlated um, that might signify that one uh, of those variables can be predicted by the other um, it's also quite possible that um, one causes the other although this is only a possibility um, of course we need to rely on theory uh, to uh, conclude or to um, um, think about um, whether these two variables are 
uh, uh, causally related and correlation is also used um, for uh, reliability tests such as test retest reliability uh, wherein we examine if uh, the scores in the initial test is correlated or co-varies with the scores when you take the test again in the retest uh, phase okay um, now when we talk about uh, relationship uh, one aspect of relationship is the direction of the relationship um, so there are two possible directions one is a positive relationship uh, and when we say a positive relationship uh, it indicates that there is a uh, or indicates that the increase in one variable coincides with the increase in the other variable so let's think about things that are related uh, positively um, for example um, th the increase in stress um, might be related with um, let's say for example uh, anxiety the increase in anxiety so that is a positive correlation um, a negative correlation on the other hand is uh, an inverse relationship wherein the decrease in one variable coincides with the increase in the other variable no? and uh, vice versa so essentially uh, what i'm saying is that so this is what uh, positive correlation looks like uh, when one variable increases the other variable also increases uh, and for the negative relationship uh, when one variable increases the other variable uh, decreases an example of a negative relationship uh, would be um, let's say for example um, uh, the more your workload is uh, the lesser your well-being might be uh, so if that is true then workload and uh, well-being uh, should have a negative correlation or a negative relationship okay. oops uh, sorry Um, so here is an example of uh, what a negative relationship and a positive relationship looks like if you plot them in a uh, in the figure graph them in a scatter plot so in here we have two variables which is intelligence test score and grade point average and you will notice that so each of these dots is an individual uh, and each individual is measured in terms of his grade point average and also his intelligence and you will notice that the dots uh, form uh, this particular uh, sort of tra trajectory um, and what we can see here is that individuals who score highly on intelligence uh, test are also more likely to have higher grade point average while those uh, individuals who score uh, low in intelligence tests um, also tend to have lower grade point average and so that is a positive uh, relationship on the other hand we have here two other uh, two pairs of variables we have level of stress and immune system functioning uh, and this is a negative relationship uh, when your stress level is high uh, your immune functioning tends to be lower um, whereas when your uh, level of stress is low your immune functioning tends to be more high so this is a uh, an example of a of a negative relationship okay. um, now when we run many of our um, correlation analysis most of them are run under the assumption that the relationship is linear uh, and by linear um, 
So perhaps these are linear relationships because the relationships can be modeled by a straight line. Uh, so so as so as this one. Um, by the way, before I continue uh, discussing, it is important to note that when you run correlation, uh, correlation is does not really uh, require to specifically identify which is the independent variable or which is the dependent variable. Um, we can, however, sort of think of uh, the intelligence test, you know, which is a measure of IQ, as something that precedes uh, a grade point average but in terms of the analysis correlation does not really ask us to specify which is the IP and which is the dependent variable so it's merely examining the association between these two things um, and that's also the reason why sometimes um, in published materials correlations are also referred to as zero order correlation because you're not really putting an order as to which of the variables come first and which of the variable uh, variables come next and so there is no order to such um, okay um, so here is an example of a linear relationship um, and this relationship is perfect uh, in the sense that you will notice that all of our data points fall on a straight line and this is a positive uh, relationship the more merchandise you sell the higher your salary is the lesser mer merchandise you sell the lower your salary is um, but it's important to remember that not all relationships are linear some relationships are actually curvy uh, linear um, despite that many of the uh, statistical techniques or correlation techniques that we study in um, undergraduate statistics are um, you know techniques that are used um, with the assumption that the relationships of the variables that we are dealing with is linear um, so that is the um, uh, what do you call this the direction aspect of uh, correlations or relationships the other aspect that we are looking into when we study or when we test uh, correlation is the magnitude of the relationship um, and relationships can be described as perfect uh, meaning to say that's the highest uh, magnitude or it could also be um, uh, gradations of an imperfect relationship so a perfect relationship is one uh, in which a positive and or negative relationship exists and all the points fall on the line um, thus the proportion of the rise and fall of the two sets of scores remain at a constant uh, on the other hand an imperfect relationship does not have that no? so this is an example of a perfect relationship while these are examples of a of an imperfect relationship okay. so this uh, the magnitude of this relationship is the strongest and and these are weaker uh, magnitudes of relationship okay um so these are the gradations of the relationship um, when we when we calculate for the correlation it is numerically represented by values between negative one and positive one um, negative and we call these values as correlation coefficients correlation coefficients um, negative one and positive one are the strongest possible correlations both of them are perfect um, despite um, however they have uh, uh, different directions so this one is perfect uh, but a negative correlation and this one is perfect but a positive correlation and you will notice that when the relationship is perfect all of our data points fall on a straight line 
and between negative 1 and positive 1 uh, are uh, uh, gradations of relationships um, the smaller the value reg regardless of the sign uh, means uh, a weaker and a weak uh, weaker and weaker relationship um, so point 0.8 is weaker uh, 0.7 is weaker than 0 0.8, 0 0.6 is weaker than 0 0.7, and ultimately, if your correlation coefficient is zero or near zero, that indicates um, that indicates um, the lack of the relationship between the the two variables. Okay. Um, but the the question is um, which of or or when do we consider um, a correlation coefficient as statistically significant? When can we statistically say that there is indeed a relationship or a pattern of covariation? And when will we say that there is none? Like for example, uh, this uh, point uh, zero point three. Does does it look like that there is a pattern of covariation it's quite evident that it's a pattern of covariation at 0 0.09 or 0 0.08 or even 0 0.07 but what about 0 0.03 or 0 0.02 um, and essentially um, what we are what we are doing uh, in order to determine this is to uh, run a statistical analysis that looks into whether or not a particular coefficient such as 0.3 is significantly different from zero yeah yeah okay um okay, so I'll, I'll talk more a bit about that uh, in a little while um okay all right so i've talked about that already so a perfect positive correlation is positive one. Perfect negative correlation is negative one. Um, now for for Pearson R. So what I'm talking about uh, now is uh, Pearson R. What exactly happens, or how exactly? Uh, what is the behind the scenes uh, when we compute for a Pearson R correlation coefficient? Um, essentially, uh, what is done. Uh, in the background is if we have two data if we if we have two sets of data and we want to know if the weight of a bag of oranges is correlated with the cost um is uh, because they have different um because they have different metrics or, or measurement what pearson r correlation essentially is to um look into their standard scores so what happens when you convert uh, uh, 2.5 pounds and 0.75 dollars um, into a standard score a z score um, where are they in their respect respective distribution where is 2.5 relative to the other weight and where is 0.75 cents in reference to the other uh, cost um, and um, we would see a higher coefficient when the position of these raw scores are near each other uh, and we can see here that the standard scores of weight and cost uh, when converted for uh, are, are the same for the for the uh, two variables the z score of 0.75 is negative one three four the z score of point uh, 2.25 is negative one three four and that goes for the rest uh, and when this happens um, this uh, is an example of a perfect uh, relationship um, so the the closer uh, they are uh, in in terms of where the raw scores are in their respective distribution the higher your Pearson R correlation coefficient will be 
Now, let's go back to the question. Um, how do we know um, how do we know if the coefficient is significantly different from zero? Um, when you look at textbooks, um, you'll often find tables like this. So the answer really is um, varies you know, depending on your degrees of freedom, uh, which for Pearson R, correlation is n minus 2. So let's say, for example, you have a sample size of 30 uh, minus 2, that's 28. Uh, and if you have an alpha level of 0 0.05, then the minimum correlation coefficient, uh, which is judged as significantly different from 0, is 0 0.361. So we can only say that there really is a correlation if it is you know 0 0.361 and above so this is the threshold so anything below this is technically um, zero correlation um, so that essentially is the first thing that you have to uh, to to know is my correlation coefficient significantly different from zero and the pattern here is that the smaller your sample size is, the smaller your degrees of freedom, the higher the cutoff will be. So let's say, for example, you have a sample size of, uh, of 8, um, your degrees of freedom is 6. At 0 0.05, what you need is a correlation coefficient of 0 0.707 um, for you to say that there really is a significant relationship between the two variables and anything less than that um, even if uh, by some standards 0 0.6 is is already a good um, correlation coefficient value would would still mean to say uh, or w would still be interpreted as no correlation it would be practically the same as 0, 0.0 correlation coefficient um, um, another example if you have a sample size of 50 your degrees of freedom is 48 um, at an alpha level of 0 0.05 um, what you will conclude as statistically significant uh, correlations would be coefficients that are 0 0.279 and above and anything below that is practically the same as zero um, and so once you have determined whether or not your coefficients are significantly different from zero another thing that we can do is to describe that if your correlation coefficient is not significantly different from zero um, and by the way um, we don't we don't use the tables but we don't have to use the table now uh, because technology affords us to um, um, compute um, through our software the exact p-value uh, of our coefficients. So if our coefficient uh, has a p-value of less than our alpha, then um, we conclude that that is a st statistically significant correlation coefficient um, and we don't have to use tables for that um, anymore our softwares you know, provide us with the p-values already now only when it is significant can you talk about whether they are uh, only uh, then you can describe the strength of the relationship are they weak moderate or strong and do not change the wording these are the standard words that we used to describe the correlation not small medium large it's always weak moderate and strong um so um basically anything below 0.30 or 0.3 is a weak correlation um correlation between 0.3 to 0.5 is strong uh, moderate correlation and 0.5 above is a strong correlation again anything below 0.3 is weak uh, 0.3 to 0.5 is moderate 
and point five above is a strong uh, correlation. Um, but again, this is only meaningful if our correlation is significant. Uh, if it's not, even if it's 0.5 and it's not significant, then there's no point to describe that as a strong correlation. You say that as, you know, there is no correlation. There is, it's the same as having zero correlation. Um, now, these standards is, is, of course, arbitrary. Um, this is based on uh, Cohen's, uh, the criteria set by Cohen, and mostly this criteria applies for social sciences. Um, the way that uh, these coefficients are described might not be the same for a discipline such as business, uh, because you know in business you talk about things that are more predictable, things that are more concrete. Um, so perhaps in business what is considered as a strong correlation is 0.7 and above um, but for social sciences these are our criteria for describing the coefficient again i want to stress that we only describe the relationship as weak moderate and strong if they are significant if they're not then there's no point at describing them as weak moderate or strong um, now, Pearson R, um, as what I've said a while ago, is used when your two, uh, two variables are continuous. But what if one of your variable is uh, dichotomous? Uh, let's say, for example, gender. Categories are male and female. Um, we, we, of course, the... the, the the first thing that we that comes to mind is that shouldn't we use t-test to analyze the relationship between a dichotomous uh, a variable uh, and a continuous variable yes we can use t-test but we can also use Pearson R correlation um, for as long as um, the levels of your of, of your categorical variable is uh, coded uh, numerically um, let's say for example we code male as one and female as zero uh, when we do so we can use that variable uh, and run uh, Pearson R specifically textbook would call this as point by serial but the computation is practically the same so again, uh, you can use a variable that is categorical and dichotomous and use that variable um, or use Pearson R in analyzing the relationship between a dichotomous variable and a continuous variable. That is possible. Um, and finally, when um, some of your variable or one of your variable is ordinal um, the alternative to, to, to Pearson R would be Spearman rank correlation okay all right so uh, that ends my short lecture on um, correlation um, I hope that you learned something um, and see you in the next lecture.